So a few weeks back, I made a video on how to use resources for AMC1, how to prepare. But some of you asked me how to make the notes exactly. So in this video, I'm going to do just that. I'll tell you how to combine your notes, how to start your preparation. And it is completely fine if you don't take coaching. Many students pass this exam without the help of coaching institutes. So you can do it too. Just follow along and make sure that you watch the video till the end. So I made my notes myself. I did take help from a coaching tutor, but he was not very active. Regular classes were not being held by him. So half of my preparation was my self-study and I had to compile all my resources myself. So if you are opting for the same pathway that you don't want to take help from anyone, you don't want to spend thousands of dollars on coaching institute, that is completely fine. I will share the right method with you. Now for coaching, I would say if you have that kind of money that you are ready to spend 500 to 1000 dollars, you can do that. Definitely. It's an option for you. But for those who are not having that kind of financial stability, it's completely fine to not take help from coaching institutes for AMC part one. It's completely doable, but you have to make sure that you follow all these steps that I've mentioned in this video. Before we start, I want to make this thing clear that you absolutely need a quotient bank for your preparation that approximately takes uh, 80 to 100 dollars for three months and you can spend this much amount of money but this is absolutely crucial for your preparation since you do need a question bank so that you know that your preparation is going in the right direction in the last video i also told you which question bank is fine but as i told you e medici is fine medx m plus x i think e medici and medx are good you can definitely follow these apps or whatever other question bank you're following that is absolutely fine you have to follow that one resource only you don't have to run for multiple sources that i will do m plus x i will do medx also you don't have to do this just follow a single source but you definitely need a question bank for your preparation. You just have to spend 80 to 100 dollars for three months and you will be fine. The rest of the resources that I'm going to mention are absolutely free of cost, but you do need a question bank for your preparation so that you know that your preparation is going in the right direction. For books, you don't need to purchase anything. All the PDF files are available online for recalls also, for your guidelines, all the resources are free of cost. And I have attached a Google Drive in my previous video of AMC1 preparation. If you want to see it, just directly watch the video and you will find the link in the comments and directly you will get to the, all the books and resources for AMC part one. It's many people purchase therapeutic guidelines subscription, but you do not need to do that. RACGP, RCH, RANSCOG, all these guidelines are fine. You do not need to purchase any subscription Second thing that is mandatory for your preparation is recalls. Now, if you are doing self-study without the help of any coaching institute, you definitely have to do recalls because that is going to make sure that you pass this exam within your first attempt. So all the PDF files of recalls are available on Telegram groups. At least make sure that you follow six months of recalls. Solve them yourself. Try to understand the concept instead of cramming the information from these files. Try to understand how this answer is the right answer. So for your preparation, I'm going to give you a six months timeline and I will share how you can divide your time of six months for your AMC one preparation. So for the starting of your preparation and making a good foundation, you should absolutely rely on some theory books. The books that you can use are John Murtagh handbook, red book for guidelines, and you can even use Kaplan for psychiatry and surgery questions. If you feel that your subjects are not having a strong foundation, then you can also check out Plab Keys. So Plab Keys is a resource that is used for Plab candidates, but many students use that resource as well because the theory given in Plab Keys is very nice. There are free PDFs available online in Telegram groups and WhatsApp groups. For example, if you want to do respiratory medicine, you can directly find the link of respiratory medicine notes of lab keys in any of these groups that I mentioned. And you can make sure that you have a good foundation from these notes. But your main preparation theory should rely on handbook, John Murtagh, Red Book and some portions you can read from Kaplan. Regarding the plab keys, yes, there are a few things that are very different from AMC, but many topics are quite similar. So for foundation only, I'm saying this because many versions are outdated of plab keys also. They are regularly getting updated. So make sure that you have the latest version of these PDF files of plab keys. Now, after you're done with your theory, you should immediately start reading handbook and also start solving recalls. So in the third month of your preparation, after you have covered your theory nicely, you have to read each condition from the guidelines from RACGP, RCH and RANSCOG. You have to check the recall files also and make your own notes subject wise. I will share in the end how I made my notes. 
so you will have a good idea of how to include question banks recalls resources all of this in your notes and in the third month of your preparation along with guidelines you have to start a question bank now don't wait till you are done with your second revision then you will start your question bank you have to immediately start question banks after you have done with the complete theory now the way to solve these question banks is you have to do it randomly instead of doing subject wise you have done the theory once and you can definitely start your preparation by doing random topics from your question bank instead of going subject wise because that creates a bias in your head so whenever you are solving question bank subject wise like respiratory medicine you will have a bias that okay this can be a copd or asthma you should definitely solve these question banks randomly since you have covered your theory at least once you also have to read the recall files in the recall files make notes of these conditions which are rare which you don't have a good understanding of include that portion in your notes these recall files you will see they tend to give good explanations below the question and you can see all the guidelines or the theory sometimes in these files also so definitely use that for your preparation after you have done your theory and please make sure that you are revising handbook simultaneously so from the third month of your preparation four things you have to do number 1 is revise handbook number 2 is do recalls actively number 3 is read each condition from guidelines and also you have to do a question bank so assuming that you are going to take a lot of time solving these things you will take at least 2 to 3 months for completing your question banks for your recall files and guidelines you have 5 months of your preparation already done so in 5 months of duration you would have completed so many things without using any coaching institute just by spending few bucks on the question bank you would save thousand of dollars without relying on any coaching institute so now in your second revision you have to start revising your notes you have to start revising the guidelines from red book and also the notes that you have made yourself and regularly revise the handbook multiple times again and again If you have purchased a question bank try to solve mock tests that are included in your question bank try to solve at least 5 mock tests and you will have a good understanding if your preparation is going in the right direction or not now coming to the notes i will show how i have distributed my notes so i have distributed my notes system wise for each system i have written the references which were to be used with my notes like here i have mentioned for respiratory john murtagh chapter number 73 has asthma chapter number 74 for copd chapter 122 for thrombosis 38 for dyspnea and chapter number 131 for thrombosis so all of these resources i have included so that i know if i can check the references for that particular system for the question bank you can solve e medici emedex any recall questions and if you have the time you can also solve us emily step 2 questions at least two or three blocks you can solve not everything you have to do but just for your practice you can solve the step 2 questions as well Now at the end of my notes I used to include questions that I found that were quite unique and were important for my preparation so I used to include all these questions so if I was solving the recall files and if I found any particular questions there were any important questions I would write that down in my notes so if i found any particular topic that is reoccurring like pneumonia copd i will separately make the notes of that condition and i will write down the treatment that is specifically asked in amc1 so for typical pneumonia i made a mnemonic a b c so a is for the amoxicillin in mild pneumonia b is for benzyl penicillin for moderate severity pneumonia and for severe we had ciftriaxone or cefotaxim so i made these mnemonics to simplify my preparation and you can do that as well if you are finding a particular topic that is very hard to understand so for the systems that were not covered in any coaching institute i would simply just go to my question bank and i was using m plus x at that time so i used to write down the questions that were hard to understand for me and i included that in my notes of that particular system sometimes i would also include the guidelines in my notes so for renal stones i was very confused when to have laser lithotripsy and when to choose eswl so i wrote that down from recgp just to make sure that i had no confusion so 5 to 10 mm stones we have to do eswl similarly i made the notes for each subject in the same manner i used to write the resources at the top 
I also used to make many mnemonics for those conditions which are very confusing. For example, in psychiatry, you have many syndromes and disorders. So I made mnemonics in that way. So for example, you have somatization disorder. I made the mnemonic, you have so many symptoms. So somatization is so many symptoms. Mnemonic was particularly useful for me to differentiate between somatization disorder and illness anxiety disorder, which was previously called hypochondriasis, which is a persistent belief of underlying serious disease and patient cannot accept negative results. So at the end of my preparation, I didn't do any resource hunting. I was just following my notes and it definitely helped me pass this exam in the first attempt. So please make sure that you don't uh, get confused in the last month of your preparation. So to summarize everything, the timeline of your preparation should look like if you have at least six months, you can easily crack this exam. You can even crack this exam within five months if you are vigilant enough, but I am showing you the timeline for six months. Now, suppose that you are giving one to one and a half months for your basic theory. You have few things that you need to do. You have John Murtag, you have handbook, which is also called the blue book, your red book for the guidelines. And also this is optional, but you can also use Kaplan or Plab keys, which is for UK students and Kaplan for US MLE students. This is just to give you a good understanding of the topics. This should not be used as your main resource. This is just optional if you have time and if you want to understand the topics nicely, you can use these resources. Now coming to the second part of your preparation, which is after you have done your basic theory, you have two to three months to cover question banks, recall files, guidelines and handbook revision. So handbook revision is very necessary so that you will have an understanding of how the questions actually appear in the exam. As I mentioned in my previous video, you have to focus on the image based questions from handbook. So definitely revise that in your second revision after you have done your basic theory. So this basic theory and solving the question bank should be done within five months maximum. So after you have done your first revision in five months, then you can revise your notes in the next one month. For the revision, what you have to do is the notes that you have prepared yourself should be your primary source. Now, along with the notes, you have to regularly do the recall files especially the recall files of one week back. So if there are any new topics coming in the exam, you can cover that. So definitely do recalls in the last month again. So after notes and recalls, you have to revise handbook again if you have not done in the first revision itself. So handbook and also you can give mock test which can be included in your question bank that you have purchased. That is absolutely free sometimes. You can give your mock test and that will be your six months timeline and you should be fine with this preparation. You do not need anything else outside from this. For the guidelines, as I mentioned previously, you can use RACGP, RCH and RANSCOG for all of the conditions. You do not need to read therapeutic guidelines necessarily. They are optional. If you have them, it's fine, but you do not need to purchase it separately since all of the conditions can be done with these three guidelines. RACGP covers most of them, but if you want to go an extra mile, you can cover the specific guidelines for pediatrics in RCH for Obsgyne, RANSCOG, but that would be all. You do not need to go through therapeutic guidelines. So that is how your preparation looks like in six months duration and you will be able to pass this exam in the first attempt itself. All the best.